and just knows a lot of good stuff. John McClain, Hall of Famer, joins us on 365 Sports with Paul Craig, and I'm David Smoke. John, is there a chance, and, and shoot me down, but is there a chance that at the end of the year, based on what he's done, C.J. Stroud, barring just something that happens, is at least involved in some of the MVP talk? The uh, Associated Press 50 member panel that has to have covered the NFL for at least 10 years. And there's writers, broadcasters, former players, uh, general managers on that. It's for regular season. And I just saw that the last player to win it when his team did not win the division was Adrian Peterson in 2012, which is also the last year non quarterback won it. Uh, only one rookie in history has ever won MVP, and that was Jim Brown, the greatest player I've ever seen uh, with the Browns in 1957. He has come into the mix. He's sixth right now in Vegas, buying five quarterbacks. They'd have to win the division. Right now, the Texans are one game behind the Jaguars. They play Arizona at home. Then they host the Jaguars. They beat Jacksonville by 20 in the first game. Then they host Denver. And the only two games they have left against teams with winning records, Jacksonville and Cleveland, they're played at Energy Stadium. So I think he'll get some votes, but uh, I don't think he's going to win it. John, um, what would you say that the Texans, I mean, like how does it change their their view of just, say, next year's offseason? I know we're not there yet, but knowing that, they don't have to, to to figure out quarterback for another year. How do they – do they get more aggressive? Do they do they change a draft strategy? What do they do because C.J. Stroud has been such a home run? Well, they don't have to worry about the quarterback for a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that – and he's under a rookie contract for probably getting an extension after his third year like Deshaun Watson did. Don't think they'll be putting a no-trade clause in there like Watson's agent David Mulligetta who also represents Stroud, would ask for. And uh, we thought going into camp, their biggest needs were wide receiver. Now, Nico Collins is their leading receiver, 6'4", 220. Noah Brown from the Cowboys, my goodness, he's had 155, 172 yards the last two games. He's been hurt till the last three. He's running open. He's running over people. You know, his, they signed him to a one-year deal. Nick Serio has a lot of players, veterans, that he and Amico Ryan wanted that he signed a one-year contract, like Devin Singletary, running back to him, 30 carries, 150 yards. Sheldon Rankin, defensive tackle, had three sacks Sunday, the first time that's happened since G.J. Watt in 2018. So uh, watching them in the offseason, when they're going to have a lot of cap room, do they want to re-sign guys? How many do they want to keep? How many will they let go? And Or do they want to get players from other teams? They still have draft choices coming from Cleveland. and uh, But overall, I think the biggest surprise has been the wide receivers and their pass rush. If you look at what San Francisco does, all their number one picks are on the defensive line. Texans have one former number one pick on the defensive line. That's Will Anderson Jr. So I'm guessing they will target the line since they rush four most of the time. John, a lot of interesting things going on in the AFC West right now. You got the Chiefs, who obviously are still the, the top dogs, but they got a massive game coming up with the Eagles next week. I can't wait to see what the, the ratings are for that one. But also, the Broncos starting to get it together there with Sean Payton, and, and now the Raiders with Antonio Pierce as the uh, as the interim getting a big win over the Jets the other night. Uh, what are your thoughts on Antonio Pierce and the Raiders and uh, what he may be able to do for them moving forward? One of the things that he, he has done are things that it's mind-boggling that Josh McDaniels didn't do. They have the NFL's leading rusher, Josh Jacobs. And Josh Jacobs, they hadn't been running the ball the last few weeks. He's had 91 yards and 128, and they're taking the pressure off of quarterback Aiden O'Connell. They're not making mistakes. They're throwing the ball to Devontae Adams in different ways. Those are things you'd think they would have been doing all season, 
but for some reason, Josh McDaniels did not. Just did a terrible coaching job. Walked away with a lot of money, not Jimbo money, but a lot of money. He's been fired in the second season of two jobs. He'll never get another head coaching job. And by the way, his brother, Ben McDaniels, is a behind-the-scenes guy here, coaches wide receivers. He's doing a fabulous job. So all the news about the McDaniel family isn't negative. John, the the Bills, uh, they they just look like everything's difficult, like they're uptight. And obviously a great win for Denver. Sean Payton, they've won three straight. But what do you hear is going on with them? I thought when I heard there was breaking news involving the Bills, they were firing a special teams coach because it's inexcusable having too many men on the field for the biggest play of the game. And uh, Buffalo looks discombobulated on both sides of the ball. Josh Allen's making more mistakes than any quarterback in the league. They, they seem poorly coached to me. Like in that game, they're running back, fumbled the ball, but they had great average yards per carries. So they got away from it, and they just look poorly coached. They fired Ken Dorsey. Everybody thought it was going to be a smooth transition with him going from quarterback coach to coordinator, and it backfired. I cannot wait to see what happens now in the offseason. I don't think McDermott will be fired, but it's weird to look at a graphic of the playoffs, see the Texans in, Bills out. John, what do you think will happen with Mike Vrabel? Not a damn thing. Mike mm. Vrabel's not going anywhere. Amy Adams Trunk loves him. If he got fired in the morning, he'd have a job by lunch. If he's fired at lunch, he'd have a job by sundown, even with sundown being a lot earlier. And uh, Vrabel is viewed around the league as a great coach. Now, uh, they're going to have to make changes because they've been bad. Will Levis has really struggled after his great debut with four touchdowns against Atlanta. But they'll pull a couple of upsets, and uh, one of them might be the Texans. They play the Texans two times in three weeks in December. I remember when the Detroit Lions played the then Redskins in an NFC championship game and what was that, ninety one when that was Were you been? born then? I was. I was just a few years old at that point, but I do remember that. And the Redskins obviously won and went on and, and won the title, but and that was the last title that Washington won. Why do you have but, to say but that? But John, Craig? when's the last time that's the, that's the only time I can remember the Lions being like pretty good. I know there's been moments there, but can you recall the last time there's been this this much buzz as has been built up with Dan Campbell right? Right now in, in, in Detroit? The last time the Lions were as good as they are right now was when they won two championships with Buddy Parker as the head coach, who's going into the Hall of Fame uh, in the class of 2024. He dominated Paul Brown. It's weird thinking of Lions, two championships. When I was five, five and six years old, and uh, that's it. I mean, one playoff victory since the 50s. Dan Campbell, you know, there's a lot of people saying A&M should give him a Jimbo-type contract to come home to College Station and back to Texas. What he should do is use him to get a monster contract. No way the Ford family is going to let him get out of there unless his heart was in College Station. So we're going to hear that a lot uh, with candidates who are going to say, no, I'm not interested in telling their agent, see how much you can get on a, use A&M, see how much you can get me on a new deal. And uh, Dan Campbell, wouldn't he make a great addition to A&M being a head coach? But everybody likes the guy. How can you not like the Lions right now? There's, they're fun to watch. They're, they're a talented team. And Campbell and his assistants, are getting the most out of their players. Yeah, they really are, and it's happened pretty quickly, too. Do you think Aaron Glenn will get some run as a head coaching candidate this offseason? I think he will get interviewed. The coach is definitely the hottest assistant in the league is Ben Johnson, their offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. Texans interviewed him, liked him a lot, and he immediately said, I need another year as a coordinator. Like, the Texans are going to lose their coordinator, Bobby Slowey, the game with Rico Ryan. From San Francisco, Kyle Shanahan, protege. I don't think it'll be after one year as a coordinator. I think this time next year. And Ben Johnson's going to be the hottest assistant coach as soon as the season's over. 
John, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, guys. Sick them. Sick them. That's John McClain, Hall of Fame columnist with us on 365 Sports. It's 5.50.